Hello, welcome to this week's Weekly Girl Annie cast. We're back. It's your weekly anime and fan discussion podcast run by girls for everyone. <laughs> <laughs> I'm your host, Melissa. Hello, and I am your host, Jada. So, Jesus fucking Christ, man. <laughs> it's been a week, hasn't it? Yeah. Um, why do I do this to myself? <laughs> you want to explain why this is so late? Totally yeah, <laughs> it's because um, for orientation, I usually like to help out as a leader. Because um, you're a good then, person. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so Debatable. Basically, I was busy from 9 a.m. to 9 p.m. for a couple days for training. And then the rest of the day is like 7 a.m. to 12 p.m. for the actual orientation events. Um, and that was until right. Wednesday, but then on Thursday and Friday, there were also orientation events running until 10 p.m. And then on Saturday, I had some volunteering, and also I had to help my friend clean up and move her place. And uh, Sunday, I had to do, like, my homework and all my labs and stuff because of, like, the rest of the week I've been busy. And so we're recording today. <laughs> yeah, it's Monday today right it's monday yes yes it is yeah okay wow i don't even uh, like you? i can't even keep track of the days all right uh i'm good i was like i wasn't as busy as you but like i've been doing stuff for school so i didn't get to watch like the fmab episodes until like a few hours ago uh -huh. but i'm also like i'm also glad that i just watched it because like oh man but, oh, like those are really good we're gonna talk about that yeah, we're gonna talk about that later though, so stay tuned, you guys. Okay, so let's jump right in to otaku. So otaku is the segment in which we talk about anime news and discuss other fan-related things, because we like other things. Um, and this week in anime news, do you... I guess we're gonna start it off with, like, on a sad note, I guess, because, like, um, you know... Pinako Rockbell's voice actress died. Yeah, so, Miyoko Asu passes away. It's yeah. too bad. I was just, you know, I just finished also watching the episodes and I watched them in Japanese because I have not watched them before. Um, mm -hmm. So knowing, I don't know, that she just recently passed, it kind of sucks. It's really sad. Yeah. And she, like, she, she like, embodies the role so well, especially, yeah. like... Ugh, nothing really else to say, just a sad time. I mean, she was very old, so I'm glad she, you know, lived as long as she did. Yeah, and I'm happy that she was a part of Fullmetal Alchemist Brotherhood, you know? Like, yeah. it definitely would not be the same without her. So, I guess, moving on to more lighthearted news. Beep, 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 Hedgehog Movie Watch 20k18. 2K18, 20K18. Yeah, you know. <laughs> <laughs> it's never coming so, out. So, <clears throat> this basically surprised me because I've never seen this happen before. But, like, apparently the film premiere was pushed to an earlier date, which concerns me because it's like, how much time is being put into this film? Everyone's so excited. You want it to come out now. <laughs> well, like, I'm worried because it's like, they're giving them less. Either. They're giving them less production time because there's actually not a lot that they're that they want to accomplish with this movie, or it's like they're really on track or something. So I don't know. No, the movie is just Stay making itself. It's just so easy. It's just so fun and good. I know, right? Better be fun and good. I kind of actually want to like watch this with you when it actually comes out later yes. now because it's like, <laughs> oh my god. Let's review bad movies together. Yes. <laughs> Not to say that it's going to be bad, but like, I'm suspecting that it's going to be bad. If it's really good, then we can review it on the podcast and it will be like, hey. And other news for bad movies. Um... <laughs> Detective Pikachu the movie. Won't have Ash in it, El Mayo. That's funny. That is funny. Um, I mean, yeah. Detective Pikachu the game doesn't really have Ash in it. I played the yeah. demo and I could not finish the demo because detective Pichu pikachu's voice was so bad yeah it's like have you played the demo no i haven't i'm actually surprised that you played the demo because it's it's like 
um, they tried to find someone that was that sounded like Danny DeVito. Yeah, but it it's just so terrible. I know that's what I I also thought too because I I saw the trailer for it and like damn. What a good trailer deserves an Oscar because like Pikachu has a super deep New York voice or whatever, and like he shoots a bazooka. So you know, it's like listen. The reason people wanted Danny DeVito to play Pikachu is because of how unfitting the voice was. <laughs> but like Danny DeVito is an icon. Whoever voiced this Pikachu was not an icon, and it just you're just left with how badly it just doesn't fit Pikachu. Okay, but like you know who's playing Pikachu, right? Is it? Ryan Reynolds? Yeah, it's Ryan Reynolds. <laughs> I don't know how to- I don't like that either. It makes me feel bad. Yeah, I don't know, because it's like- I don't know. Usually with voice acting, with like a really famous actor, sometimes it's not really that good. Like, especially- like you can tell with like- uh, like old Studio Ghibli redubs with like mm-hmm. actually famous actors to get names into the cast and get people to buy the DVDs, I guess, but like- I don't know. We'll see. More we'll see. <laughs> More later, I guess. Um, and then, in final news, a lot of Pokemon news going on. Hell yeah. Yeah. So basically, a Pokemon Go player in Japan married someone because they met through Pokemon Go. And I just wanted to like know your thoughts on that because... You know. I mean, I can't believe it's 2010 again when Pokemon Go is really popular. <laughs> 2010 is the wrong year. It's way too early. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's way too early. I was like, oh, you know, two years before high school ended. And I was like, wait, no, high school ended in like 2016. I can't believe it's 2014 again. <laughs> yeah. But the thing is, though, people still play Pokemon Go. Like, I have cousins. I know. A lot of my friends do. Yeah. My cousins, like, religiously play it. You know, I'm, I mean, I'm happy for this guy, though. He met lo- the love of his life through... Oh, the reason I'm still single is because I don't play Pokemon Go. Basically, that's the answer to all our problems. If you're... Who, <laughs> who needs Tinder? Get Pokemon Go. <laughs> <laughs> so, a lot of Pokemon news, huh? Yeah, so, I guess we should talk about Pokemon, then. Because, like... Yeah, like, it's how a thing. into Pokemon were you? Um, hmm. I feel like I would- I'm not gonna be like- I feel like you're like the expert in video games, you know what I'm saying? But like, my relationship to Pokemon was like, chiefly through the show rather than the video games. Like, I played the newer games, I didn't play like, Pokemon Red or Blue, uh, or like, any of the original games. Like, I played Diamond and Pearl, like, that was my shit. And like, X and Y and stuff. Um, see, Pokemon Diamond and Pearl was like, our gen, I'd say. Which some people are like, older than us, obviously. Mm -hmm. So like, I obviously also started off with Pokemon. I had Diamond and my brother had Pearl. But then I liked Pokemon so much that I bought Emerald. So I also played Pokemon Emerald. (laughs) Yeah, and then I think I also have played... I played both Diamond and Pearl, and then I got um, Sun recently. Um, so I haven't played like a lot of Pokemon games, but I do know like the differences between each games and like how a lot of the, the things function in each game. Like and like I know how everyone hates the contest in Pokemon Diamond and Pearl, but I love the mm-hmm. contest. I actually like the contest too. Like me too. Even in the show, I know they're bad. Yeah. But... Even in the show, like, I really liked how Dawn had, like, her own thing outside of battling. And, like, how yeah, Pokemon... Yeah, you can do other things with like, Pokemon. They're cute, guys. Yeah. Yeah. And it's, like, for aesthetics, too. Like, look at my Pokemon. So cute. You know I would be doing that. Yeah. One thing I really liked uh, about how they approached contests in the show was, like, they used moves and they tried to make them look pretty. Like, they were for show rather than to, like do damage to other Pokemon, right? So, Mm -hmm. I like that. And, like, I just love Dawn. Dawn is, like, my favorite companion so far. Mm, Dawn was my least favorite. Oh, really? like, May. (laughs) Oh, yeah, May was good, too. And then, like, they added a brother for some reason. Yeah, I hated Max. (laughs) Yeah. I was really into the Pokemon cards, though. I still have, like, a whole bunch. I think maybe, like, close to, like, over 100, definitely. Yeah. Like, I have so many. They're, like, so thick. Mm Mm-hmm. I, I have, like, folders filled with, like, the card sheets. You have folders? Yeah, but I don't know where they are anymore. They're, like, in my basement. <laughs> and they have, like, the whole card sheets, and there's, like, 
it's like 16 cards per page or something like that but like yeah boy okay <laughs> what's your favorite pokemon favorite pokemon that's so hard i feel like one of okay maybe arcanine is my favorite arcanine's pretty badass arcanine's a really good one yeah what about you i always say uh ampharos the giraffe but I'm also a real big sucker for Ponyta. Oh, Ponyta. yeah. You like, like, the horse-esque Pokemon. I actually hate horses in real life, but <laughs> horse-esque Pokemon are very cool. You're only a horse girl in the Pokemon universe. Aww. <laughs> <laughs> <It's so sad. laughs> but, like, to be fair, they made, po bleh, they made horses, like, really cool in the Pokemon universe. Because, like, Ponyta has, like... It's a fire Pokemon. Like, her, its hair is fire and stuff. Yeah. So. It is really cool. It's really cool looking. Is that all we want to say about Pokemon? For now. I feel like <laughs> there's so much more we could say. But like, this is something we can open up again. Yeah, because there's, like, there's just so much content. Especially since Pokemon, like, blew up in the West. Mm -hmm. Like, it's huge in Japan, but it's also huge over here. And it was, like, pretty integral to some people's childhood. So, like, we'll probably go back and visit revisit this again but like you know this is all we're gonna divulge for now but don't get us wrong we love pokemon it's just like there's just so much to talk about that we would take up a whole podcast episode talking about pokemon Ooh, that's an idea oh okay should we do a pokemon special later oh yeah um so bi-monthly manga rec which in twice a month we <laughs> as in jada and just jada will recommend a manga that uh yeah, she would like people so to read i'm gonna for this week, I'm going to recommend a pretty obscure one because I was browsing through my options and I found this really funny one that probably a lot of people don't know about. Um, it's called, I'm probably going to mess this up, but like I'll try my best, Gokushu Fudo. And it's called The Way of the House Husband uh... by Ono Kosuke. Okay, so it's pretty obscure. I'll explain what it is because you're probably like, um, the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> I am, yeah. So... Basically, it's about this uh, dude who used to be famous amongst the Yakuza. Do you know what the Yakuza I is? I do, yes. Yeah, so basically for anybody who doesn't know what the Yakuza is, the Yakuza is like essentially like the Japanese mafia. So it's like gangs and all that stuff. And like this guy, he basically retires from being a Yakuza because he gets married. And then he moves on to become a house husband. But like the best thing about this manga is that it's like, it's so funny. Because like, he has to like, how should I say? He like assimilates himself into the house husband life. Like he's really good at like errands and cooking and everything. But like, when other people see him, they think that he's like really violent because he looks really scary. And like, shenanigans ensue and stuff. And also like, one of the best things about this this manga is like his wife is really cute and she's like an otaku Aww. which is yeah so you'd think that they wouldn't be a compatible pair but they're actually very cute together so yeah um also it's pretty new like there's only 13 chapters and like the 13th chapter just came out recently because i checked a few hours ago and like it just came out so i'm gonna read that tonight when it's i'm done like my studying and stuff because <laughs> school is here uh but yeah by monthly manga rec the way of the house husband by oh, ono kosuke yeah. so yeah i guess we should move on to the weekly anime reveal because we have a lot of stuff to catch up on <laughs> oh yeah we do uh so we're watching yeah. both of the episodes of my hair and academia and sales at work that we missed from last week um mm -hmm. so what did you think of these uh my hero academia episodes like you said you wanted the the arc to go faster is it going faster for you or still not like where you want yeah. it to be i'm very happy <laughs> <laughs> because the provisional exam has ended finally. essentially with these last two episodes finally i was waiting for that for so long and like i guess to go into specific episodes the episode uh for the first episode that we're going to do is episode 59 and it's basically where Inasa the wind guy and Todoroki have like some beef apparently <laughs> what did you think about that it was really dumb <laughs> oh my god really yeah i thought it was really dumb why cuz like the way Inasa was acting i thought it was like something deep 
like real deep like oh like your dad killed my brother or something like that but it was legit just like your dad looked at me and you looked at me and it was the same look and i was like boy are you real are you really having a <laughs> grudge on some guy because he looked at you and you didn't like it like did you really not go pick a school because a boy looked at you funny like mm. yeah it's kind of petty but i think it goes like more into that like to get deep or like you know because i i read about this long time ago because i'm reading the manga you know what i'm saying mm -hmm. and like i think inasa is like holding a grudge against todoroki be like and because of in well he's holding a grudge against todoroki because endeavor didn't live up to his ex expectations of what he wanted in a hero i guess yeah like because i think what inasa wanted endeavor to be was he wanted him to be like all might and like because you know how All Might is like always nice mm -hmm. to everybody he meets, but like Endeavor is like, get out of my way, you're in the way or whatever, you know what I'm saying? And I like, I guess he didn't like the way he was treated, so it kind of ruined his vision of like his idol essentially because he really liked Endeavor, so mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, I guess it's kind of stupid in a way, but also if you like, <laughs> if you reach like I did. <laughs> <laughs> You could, it's probably like, it could be really deep, but you know. But it's not really like Inasa and Todoroki beef, it's more like Inasa and Endeavor beef, is what I'm trying to say. But like, yeah. Todoroki still has daddy issues, so. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> Any other thoughts? That was usually, that was actually all that happened. Yeah, that was pretty much the whole episode. Yeah, I was so happy because I wanted this part to happen a long time ago like two episodes ago essentially <laughs> so i'm happy they got to this part but it's like it's it's been a long time coming so yeah any more thoughts on episode 59 or not really more of the stuff yeah. comes in episode 60 do you want to talk about episode 60 what are your thoughts my first thought was i'm so mad mineta passed <laughs> same but, like oh my god screw him i'm so mad because <laughs> like i read it in the manga too and i was like Ugh. <laughs> Why did he pass? Like, I don't know. I guess he did some stuff compared to Todoroki Bakugo and Inasa, but like, still, I don't like Mineta. Like, I get it, because like, the whole class passes, except for those those two, but also at the same time, he sucks, and I hate him. I know, right? As I, I especially hated when he like, rubbed it in. To Todoroki's face, the fact is like the hierarchy's yeah. crumbling. Like, shut up, man. <laughs> like, okay, I guess it's supposed to be like comic relief, but it's not funny. <laughs> yeah, it's just annoying. And then Ida came and like shut his mouth, and I was like, yes, best boy, Ida, <laughs> <laughs> my favorite. I mean, I kind of saw that the three that did not make it, like, did like weren't gonna do it. Like, I kind of saw that coming. Mm -hmm. I thought it was very obvious, but like, I still do like the impact that it makes because it's like i don't know it's the first time baku goes finally i don't know facing consequences for being a terrible person yeah <laughs> he's like reflecting sort of. on like what it means what it truly means to be a hero and stuff like that because mm -hmm. he's probably like i think what it is is he's very obsessed with being the best and just winning his battles all the time but he doesn't think about like the other side of being a hero like actually being nice and like mm -hmm. you know being like being like a role model yeah like a figure in society you have to be upstanding and you have to be very polite and bakugo is neither of those things <laughs> but also like i really liked how um i really liked that horikoshi didn't make them pass because it's like they're the top two in the class and like they actually failed at something and i was like yay things are actually like they it it because it, it, it's like with those characters they don't usually like they don't learn right you know what i'm saying because yeah since they they're don't. the best they're kind of always just right yeah so uh yeah i like that because it's like you know they have they have flaws that they have to work on as well like they don't they're not just like the best they have weaknesses that they have to work on so yeah. And Something else that I liked yeah. in this episode was that 
that girl, the creepy girl that Midoriya was talking to, you find out her true identity. It's actually, like, the crazy blood girl, Himiko. Oh, yeah. And we finally find out her quirk. Yeah, you finally do. She can, like, transform and stuff. But it's, like, it's also, like, in my mind when I was watching, I was like, so wait, what happened to the other girl? Right? Yeah, me too. I was like, did she die? Is she dead? I don't know. Because they don't address it in the manga. You don't? They just, no, they don't. It's actually, like, how they do it in the show. Like, she just went missing. I don't know what's happening. Ooh, that's dark. Okay. Also, Bakugo wants to fight Deku, so... Yeah, the final confrontation you know. at the end of the episode. What did you think of that? I'm, I'm, I'm with Midoriya. It's probably kind yeah. of pointless. But, like, I guess if that's what he wants to do to, like, show his... Mm -hmm. strength his resolve to, to yeah. prove himself then you know what yeah you do that i think it's just like because he has like a superiority complex or complex or something like that so we'll see yeah In <laughs> okay i won't say anything else because like spoilers let's just move on <laughs> to cells at work i really like the thymocyte episode yeah i like the i like flashback episodes i think they're really mm -hmm. just fun you wouldn't expect. So it's like about the T cells, mm -hmm. basically. Um, like helper T cell, regularity T cell, mm -hmm. and killer T cell. Um, I think it's really funny how the dendritic cell is just always there with yeah. the camera, never ages, just take, taking pictures of everybody. It was just a, like a good all around app showing like the background yeah. of helper T and like killer T. And you think they're like totally different, but yeah. they're really just the same. It's, mm -hmm. it's, it's a nice Also, episode. like, not to be a, like, weird about it but like remember when i said that people were shipping cells it's weird i don't like it yeah but like i ship helper and killer t cells listen jada jada they're both t cells part of your immune system jada okay but like in the context of anime they're characters okay i can ship whoever i want um, I'm, I'm not gonna like write fan fiction about it but like you know it's just like okay it's a thing but i like it and like i'm a a fan like an otaku so like not really unusual behavior by me so also one more comment it's just like this episode was really shown in the shonen roots are really coming through with this because it's about like working hard, be successful and stuff. With that, do you want to move on to episode 10? Yeah. Yeah. So what did you think? The first thing I wrote was just homestead of monocyte. Because <laughs> um, in the beginning of the episode, Red Blood Cell just gets saved by this random mass stranger and they're like, yeah, that's monocyte. And even as a bio major, I'm like, I don't who <laughs> whom <Stato? laughs> yeah because i was like for for my like scientific background knowledge i learned about monocytes in immunology but i didn't remember them until this episode because <laughs> oh i was also like wait a minute huh what cell <laughs> and then i was like oh it's a monocyte so that makes sense i liked how they did the nasal cavity as like a sauna that's fun oh yeah because it's like, it, cause basically, the, if you didn't get this in the episode, the nasal cavity, its purpose is like when you breathe in air, it humidifies the air so that it's not like super harsh coming into your lungs. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah, I also like that detail. And like the thing about um, the red blood cells liking gl glucose, so they eat like steamed buns that are like chock full of glucose. That was like a nice touch. I thought that was really nice to add more comments uh neutrophil got wrecked this episode <laughs> <laughs> yeah kind of yeah because like um the the antigen that we faced this episode is like super powerful and i thought that was like a really good way to demonstrate like you know since neutrophils are only like one of the first lines of defense like coming into the body and then we get to show off macrophage, which is like, best girl, you know what I feel. <laughs> Basically, in my notes, I wrote femininity and strength, hard eyes. <laughs> That's what I wrote. <laughs> nice. I don't think I have any other comments besides like, we are back to good old fashioned edu anime. Yeah, so, I think yeah. I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm good on this. So can we, can we go on to FMAB? 
Yes. Oh my gosh. The most anticipated part of the podcast because these episodes are so good. Okay, 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 okay. <laughs> so I have to talk about these in a specific order because one twist is revealed in one episode and then totally taken back in like the second episode. And then like, mm-hmm. just think, so, okay. So remember in like last time we talked, I was like Maria Ross was um, <laughs> convicted of Yes. Uh, Colonel Hughes' uh, murder. Um, and I was like, yep. oh my god, I hope Roy Mustang like, does something about this. Come through, Roy. So in the first episode, <laughs> spoilers, <laughs> um, first off, I wrote Bear the Chopper. Awesome. Like, this whole episode, so yeah! bomb. Right? It was so good. Like, he just comes through, ripping everything, freeing Maria from her chains. I'm just like, yes, do it. Destroy everything. Awesome. Yes. Mm-hmm. But then, yeah. after he frees Maria, she runs into Roy. And basically what happens is she runs into Roy, and then you see a burned up corpse right after. That's the hard cut. Hard cut burned corpse of a woman. And I'm like, <laughs> the next thing I write is, Roy Mustang sucks so bad. <laughs> Because he kills her. He just burns up her oh body. God. She's running. She's scared. She's lost. And he's like, you're Maria Ross, right? You're convicted for my best friend's murder. Boom. Guess who's the flame alchemist to a crisp? Uh, and then I wrote, RIP Maria Ross. She was really cool. Thanks, Jada, for not spoiling what the fuck happens. <laughs> Do you have anything uh, to say on that before I move on to what happens at the next episode? Um... Yeah, because I was like, <laughs> in my notes I wrote, uh, Ross escapes and gets killed, X-Files Because <laughs> it's like, you know, I already know what happens. Um, some other things is I wrote was like, Ed blames himself for Hugh's death again. Like, man, just take a chill pill. Stop suffering. Yeah. Stop putting yourself through so much emotional strain. Yeah. But also it's like, uh, it attributes to his character as well because... It shows that, like, he takes everything extremely personally, and he's very empathetic towards other people, which is very good writing. I love Hiro <laughs> Um Also, another thing that I wrote was, like, LMAO, Roy's GF, Elizabeth. <laughs> <laughs> and it's yeah. just Hawkeye. <laughs> and then, yeah, <laughs> basically. And also, Ling is 15. Yeah, what? I don't believe okay, that. That's I don't believe Ling. that. Yeah. Yeah. So... Okay, go on. Uh, so next, next episode, episode, I wrote, never mind, Roy Mustang does not suck. So what happens is you find out that <laughs> he does not burn up her poor, poor body. He makes a fake body, and he burns that up, and then he, tr- he like, helps Mary escape to the land of Jing. Like, she's alive, and he, like, puts his whole life on the line <laughs> just to save her, and it's like, ooh, Roy Mustang. Yes, he's the best. He's, like, the best. Oh, my God. Best boy, Roy Mustang. He's actually so good. Basically. He's so smart. This is, like, yeah. a really good episode. Well, a comment for that is, like, I wrote, Mustang is on top of his shit all the time. Because this is, like, it's kind of amazing that, like, he formulated all of this. Because, like, damn, I wouldn't be able to. Does he have a planner? Probably. <laughs> It's Virgo season. <laughs> Poor Maria Ross, because, like, she... <sighs> what really got to me was, like, when Armstrong asks her if she wants him to tell her parents that she's alive, and she says no. Mm-hmm. And that made me so sad, man, because she, like, she has to take refuge in another part of the country because technically she's still a convicted criminal. And, like, her whole life's being turned upside down because fucking... Envy was like, haha, I'm Maria Ross, and I'll kill you if you was bang, and whatever. So, made me very sad. Also, I wrote, Gene Havoc is hot, not gonna lie. <laughs> oh, no. But also, he smokes, and that's really gross, so, whatever. Also, this is, like, my fave episode of season two. Yeah, this is, like, the best episode, the next one. It's just, like, the, like there's it's the perfect episode of anything ever mm-hmm. yeah and at the end of this episode we get some like big uh-oh vibes you know so with that do you want to continue into the next episode i don't actually don't remember how this starts all i have written down is hell yeah roy mustang and then oh no roy mustang <laughs> <laughs> so basically like uh 
I think the episode starts off and it's like Riza, she's doing her sniper thing, like oh, yeah. trying to, yeah. And then Gluttony comes and he's like, I'm gonna eat you, bleh. And then like the dog attacks Gluttony and yes. then Roy Mustang comes and he's like, snap, snap, bitch, you're burned. Even though it's not really burned because he's a homunculus and homunculus can regenerate and stuff. So, yeah. Yeah, um, so this is where like the the colonel and like like all his uh, underlings find out that homunculi are real and also mm -hmm. jane realizes that his girlfriend is one of them <laughs> yeah dude and also i wrote down here gross um because jane gross come on man um <laughs> they talk about like boobs in this episode it's weird i don't think i like it <laughs> <laughs> yeah i don't know it's just yeah, like a part of like, personality i guess that entire sequence with lust like the first sequence in the one room where they they defeat her using like a match and like changing the aspects of water into hydrogen like mm -hmm. that was cool and then bam i don't know where mm -hmm. she dies oof and then bam i don't know where mustang kind of dies mm -hmm. and then you go over to riza and al and like they're dying and it's so sad because it's just like al talks about how he always sees people like die in front of him and Riza is just totally mm -hmm. helpless because you can tell how much she cares for the colonel and like when she finds out she's just like totally immobilized mm -hmm. um but then <laughs> guess who's back <laughs> oh yeah it's Roy Mustang guess who's back back again the baddest bitch that's oh that sequence is so cool he just comes and she's like how did you survive and he's like i I catarized my own wounds yeah. using like my flames, and I passed out. But it's no big deal. He's hardcore, man. Um, hardcore. Yeah, core. and then he just like kills her. Mm -hmm. He just like burns her like a million yeah. times, and that I feel like that death is like probably the most. It, it's probably the most gruesome death you see like so far. It's just so. It's not bloody, but it's like she's screaming the mm -hmm. entire time, and she, her body doesn't die once. It dies a lot of yeah. times. So like. She's like, it's just she's dying a million times in that one sequence, and you're just like, ooh, yeah. damn. Because, like, when I first, like, when I first, first watched this, it didn't hit me the fact that she died multiple times. I thought she was just like, you know, she's just like moving through this, like taking the attack, but she actually like died multiple times, and like you can hear her screaming, and it's like, whoa, okay. And also, like, they actually show Riza shooting her body, like, they show the like the bullets entering her body and I was like, man, this is some type of violence stuff. <laughs> also, King Bradley was there, so Yeah, I'm kinda <laughs> sus. Also Barry no, because um... Barry is dead. <laughs> yeah, you know what? I thought he had a good run. Yeah. Really cool guy. Solid solid mm -hmm. murderer, ten yeah. out of ten. And it's like it's not like he didn't serve a purpose. Like he actually like revealed some information about how Al like because him and Al are kind of similar in the fact that they're both souls binded to armor, right? He revealed a lot of stuff about how Al could possibly or could possibly not get his body back. And basically, like, Al's a ticking time bomb now because his soul could just, like, be ripped from his, like, armor body from, like, any time now. So, <sighs> it's, it's an anxious time. Um, but turn around in this episode, like, ooh, um, the next episode, you you meet their dad, mm -hmm. Hohenheim. Hohenheim problems, man. Daddy issues. Yeah. So this whole episode is just daddy issues, T.M. <laughs> Edward hates his dad because his dad was never there for them. And his dad doesn't even, does he even do anything in this episode? No, he's, he's kind of just there. I think, like, and like he he, he, he has some, like, foreshadowing lines, because he's, like, he's, like, at the door talking to Pinaco, and he's, like, pack your bag, something's gonna happen in this country, and Pinaco's, like, nah, brah, this country's always been bullshit, you know what I'm saying? And then, like, yeah. <laughs> but he's, like, no, something bad's gonna happen. And then he leaves, like, okay, man. Like, he took the photo of his family, and he left. Also, he... He was like, um, remember, he was like to Edward, was that thing that you transmuted really your mother? And like, there's some closure in that. Yeah, there's the closure in that. So then Edward digs up, like, the thing that they created. It was not the ball. Mm -hmm. And then he also calls their teacher, Izumi. And she also figures out that what she transmuted was not 
her baby. Mm-hmm. And, like, there's closure in that. And then he also figures out, oh, like, there's probably a way that, like, we can get Al's body back from this. Because technically, Al's body is perfectly preserved, like, in that, like, dimension thing. I don't know exactly what it's called, but it's, like, his body's over there. Through the door? Yeah. So, like, they can get it back and stuff. Yeah, it's just not in this world. We'll see what happens. Oh, so just some overall notes for me. It's, like, over these, actually, more of, like, the first the first three groups of episodes. Riza and freaking Mustang's relationship, man. They're just, like, they're so close. Yeah. And, like, that's illustrated especially in, yes. like, episode 19. And it's, like, oh, oh. I love friendship. So, uh, favorite character of the week. So to conclude our podcast, let's say our favorite characters of what we're currently watching. Uh, what's yours, Jada? I want to say... Okay. I'm going to say Riza Hawkeye because, like, best friend, man. Or possibly more than a best friend. I don't yeah. know. But, like, yeah. Ooh. But it's like, you know, they fuck him. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> or at least like a lot of the fandom thinks so so mm-hmm. yeah but like Riza's just like the best man love Riza Hawkeye yeah she's what about really you good. um Barry the chopper rest in pieces like literally oh my god <laughs> comes in these episodes chopping up stuff he's making really good jokes he's playing on the good guy side for no reason just because it's fun i'm like yeah man live your best life even though you're not in a body anymore he literally like mm-hmm. kills his own body like can you imagine that and he's just like no big yeah. deal this is fun yeah really good i also thought it was like kind of ironic how like he's Barry the chopper and he killed people by cutting them up into pieces and then he died because he got cut up into pieces <laughs> so <laughs> it's kind of like the irony you know what i'm saying yeah all right so like follow us on twitter yeah follow us on twitter at weekly annie and we'll like include it in the show notes this is a reminder to include it in the description melissa when you upload Sorry. it um yeah it's okay um also this podcast is currently available on podcast.com and youtube just search weekly girls anycast or wgac into youtube or podcast.com yes please i spent a lot of time editing them and trying to upload them or re- listen to this podcast i don't know <laughs> <laughs> also tell your friends about this podcast so that we can get more viewers because we yeah. want people to hear our opinions about anime <laughs> Yeah. Um, sorry about the episode being a little bit shorter, but I have to edit these and I really don't have time this week because I'm so busy with homework and stuff. Yeah, um, guys. But I will try my best. School just came back for us. Please cut us some slack. Like, we're sorry yeah. this episode came out so late, but like, we're also, we also have lives outside of the anime world, so. I wish I didn't have a life outside the anime world. <laughs> to be honest, same. But also, I guess that's <laughs> goodbye. Yeah, bye. See you later.